In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for governor. There are going to be some things in this video that you will not find on Google. How to do it, how it's done, and how you can become the most powerful person in your state, if that's what you're intent on doing. Stick with me until the end of this video. I got a lot to share. Running for governor starts with a few basics here. Knowing the job, finding people who are going to help you, knowing your state and all of its demographics, the message you disseminate, the advertising that you do, and how you raise the money to pay for it. We're going to cover all of them, and I'm going to start with the importance of knowing the job. This is what is unique about a governor's race. You're running to be the most powerful person in your state. There is no governor in the United States that presides over a budget of less than $4 billion. There are some governors who have budgets of more than $250 billion. They manage thousands of employees. They spend billions of dollars on one cause or another. They help pay for schools. They decide matters of criminal justice. They have more power than any other single person in your state. If you're running for this job, the voters you encounter are going to expect that you will know the basics of the job, where money comes from, how it's spent, and what you're going to do with the job if you get it. In a race for governor, there are people who matter more than others. People who have enormous influence and more power than just one individual voter. People who are opinion leaders that a lot of other people pay attention to. You must have a powerful network of supporters in order to succeed. Now, who are those people? They are the leaders of your political party organization in your state. The state chair, the executive committee, most political parties have a county chair in each one of the counties in your state. They are people who care about who the governor is. And while you don't have to have the support of all of those people, it's very difficult to win a gubernatorial nomination if you don't have the support of at least some of them. There are elected officials in your state that belong to your party if you're running for governor. There are state senators associated with your party. There are county commissioners associated with your party. There are members of Congress associated with your party and state representatives. Lots of people run on your party line. Well, guess what? They've all won an election. They know how it's done. They know the contours of their own individual districts. And not only are they tremendous sources of knowledge about the districts that they represent, they've got a contact list filled with people who were helpful to them that they can introduce to you to help you on your mission. Third thing I'll mention here is the demographics of your state, not just past turnout patterns, not just party affiliation, but the age brackets of those who live in your state, their income level, the race that they're part of, the ethnic group they may, have, may belong to, the education level of people in your state. You know what? Those vary a lot county by county. In order to assemble a coalition of people that get you more votes than your opponent, you have to understand your market in detail. Now, if you don't know where to get that information or you're having trouble finding that information, I invite you to put it in the comment box and I'll direct you to a resource so that you can get that stuff at your fingertips. I'll next talk about the importance of your campaign message. You know, you know what? Voters pay more attention to who is running for governor than they may pay to a candidate for state legislature or county commissioner or even school board. Why? Because they have an intrinsic understanding that you are running to be the most powerful person in the state. And they're going to want to know that you're pretty well put together if you expect them to vote for you. All right. And this starts with five questions that voters would ask if they knew to ask it this way, that they're going to expect you to answer during the course of an gubernatorial election. Number one, what makes you qualified to do this job? 
What about your experience says that you're capable of managing thousands of employees, that you're capable of overseeing a budget of several billion dollars, that you're capable of understanding what priorities need to be, need to be, that you know where the revenue comes from and who pays what to pay for the services in your state. So I don't care what your background is, but they're going to want to know that you have some qualifications for the job, that you've got your feet on the ground, that you're capable of doing the job once you've been elected. It is incumbent upon you to tell them that. The second thing they're going to want to know is, are your values in sync with theirs? So the question they might ask you is, how do I know that your values are in sync with mine? What can you say to the voters that tell them that you are concerned about the same things they are concerned about, perhaps the quality of their schools, perhaps the safety of their communities, perhaps the taxes that they pay, perhaps the quality of the services they receive, or how responsive the bureaucracy is when they need something from a state government employee. That is part of your moral code, and you need to talk about that during the course of the campaign so that they know that yours is in sync with theirs. The third part of it is, what are you going to do for the people of your state if you get the job? How are you going to improve their quality of life? How are you going to fix a problem that may be causing them difficulty in their life? How are you going to correct something that you consider and they consider an injustice with the way things are done? Is there some wrong in your state that you want to correct, like restoring school funding that was unnecessarily cut so that school districts can have better and better paid teachers and higher quality teachers? It is incumbent upon you to have an answer to the question of, why are you running? The fourth thing I'll touch upon here is we're in an age where voters are inherently distrustful of people who are running for office. It's because they've burned, been burned too many times. And they've seen too many clowns and they've seen too many people who don't deliver on their promises. In the back of their mind, one of the questions they're going to have for you is, what's the real reason? you're doing this. Are you doing this for the glory? Are you doing this to see your name in the paper? What can you tell me that lets me know that you're absolutely positively sincere about doing the things that you're talking about doing? Some experience in your life, something that changed the way you feel or the way you think or the way you behave that was a seminal experience in your life. Something that you can tell them that lets them know they can trust you to do the right thing when they are not looking. Finally, in any competitive gubernatorial election, there's something else voters are going to ask you to do, and that is explain why you are a better candidate than your opponent. Why you, not them. They appreciate a candidate who definitely comes with that clarity during the final stages of a campaign. You paint the picture of black and white, right and wrong. Give voters the clarity so that you can make this decision easy for them. Next item we should discuss. Uh, very few candidates are ever elected governor without paid advertising. You will need to come up with an advertising plan to reach not only your broad audience, but the niche audiences that you come up with after you've examined the demographic profile of your state. So sure, there is social media and there's a lot of social media that's absolutely free. There's also social media that you can pay for with Facebook and YouTube. Those are useful means of disseminating your message, but there is also digital advertising that you can do so that your ads show up when people are looking for certain publications or checking for the weather or checking the news in their local community. A standard tool in gubernatorial races is what we call persuasion mail. That's targeted mail sent to households that talk about your qualifications or your message or your moral code, usually filled with lots of nice pictures. In certain states, radio is a very useful means of disseminating your message. All candidates for governor commonly use 
four different kinds of television. OTT, CTV, what we call connected TV, cable television, and commercial TV. Usually it's very expensive, but gubernatorial races by their nature are very expensive. You will have a limited amount of money, meaning you'll never have all the money you want. You're going to have to make tough decisions about what advertising to do and how to pay for it. So it's incumbent upon you to figure out which advertising mediums fit you and your state the best at an affordable price. And I'll mention this in passing. No gubernatorial campaign is complete unless you have a budget. You have to figure out what all of this costs. Add in the headquarters staff and the door-to-door -door operation that you plan to do so that you have some idea what you need to raise to run the campaign kind of campaign that you want to run, which leads us to fundraising. I mentioned that gubernatorial races are expensive. You have to be involved in raising the money. Now, there are many, many ways to raise money, but in a gubernatorial race, these are the most common. There's the money you ask people for, and you will, during the course of a campaign, be personally asking people to contribute to your cause. There is what we call surrogate fundraising. Those are pieces in your network, people in your network, who call people that you may not know and raise money on their behalf, either by hosting parties or hosting get-togethers or sending mail to their friends or sending email to their friends asking them to give to you. There is what we call direct mail. That's mail that's targeted to a particular household that asks somebody to contribute to their cause. A lot of older people who are not used to giving by credit cards and don't know how to open a computer and don't do email will respond to direct mail solicitations. There's also social media. You can run Facebook ads asking for contribution. Lots of people raise lots of money with text messages. There are also cocktail parties, dinner parties, and celebrity events that gubernatorial candidates commonly use to raise money. Now, I mentioned that budget. You also have to have a fundraising plan to raise it, knowing how many events you're going to have where, how much your time daily is going to be spent dialing for dollars. If you don't do that, you'll run out of money before the campaign's over. Each week, I set aside a little bit of time to talk to people who would like to talk to me. If you'd like to talk to me about your ambition to become governor of your state, I invite you to call me or click the link in the description section of this video. Send me your name and contact information and I'll be in touch to schedule a call.